thanks. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. It's two o'clock and start, it's time to start this meeting. Please, for the benefit of visitors and the committee, I would like to just make one or two introductions. I'm Councillor Fairclough and I am the chair for today's committee meeting. Councillors Fairclough, that's myself, because it says so on this label, uh, Fletcher and Newall will also make up today's subcommittee. Also present, are Nicola Raby from Legal Services and Vicky Ridge from our Democratic Services. And we also have Patricia Klein, the Principal Licensing Officer with us. Today's hearing has been set to consider an application made by the SVWL Football Limited to vary a premises license at Bolton Wanderers Football Club, University of Bolton Stadium, Burnden Way, Lostock, Bolton, BL66JW. Miss Susan Speak is the DPS for this particular place and is an, and a, mem a member of the represent and will be making a representation in response to the application. Pollution Control have also made representations and we have received represent representations from both support and objections to this application. A number of people are in attendance at today's hearing. I understand that we have the following people in support of the application. They are Suzanne Speak, who is General Manager for Bolton Wanderers Football Club. Mark Jones, Project Lead for Bolton Wanderers Football Club. Phil Mason, Head of Community and Executive Team for Bolton Wanderers Football Club. Sharon Britton, the club owner. Jason Cotillard, Commercial Director for Live Nation. And also supporting the application, we have Kay Price and Tracy Fenton. In objections to the application, the following people are in attendance. Kath King from Pollution Control, Councillor Baines, local councillor, Justin Austin and Jamie Walker. And today's proceedings will be as follows. The licensing officer will present their report. Members and any other parties will be given the opportunity to ask questions of the officer. Ms. Speak will then present the application to committee members and any other parties present, and we'll, we will all be given the opportunity to ask questions. Ms. King, on behalf of Pollution Control, will then be given the opportunity to speak, and members again will be a, present will be able to ask questions. This will be repeated with supporters. They will be, then be given the opportunity to speak and members and other parties may wish to ask questions. And then the objectors will be given the opportunity. And again, we all will be able to ask questions. The hearing will take the form of a discussion, which I will lead. It would be helpful um, if, if people go through the chair, please raise your hand if you're able to on the screen or go into the chat box to ask uh, if you wish to speak and I will bring you in. Um, this is a relatively new process that we are doing. Uh, obviously, normally we would always meet in a room and be able to see one another, um, which is clearly much easier. Uh, so I hope that you will do your best to bear with us uh, and make sure that we don't uh, all try to speak at once. Once we have finished listening to all the evidence from both sides, the subcommittee will retire and um, this will be to another virtual meeting and we will make the decision along with our democratic services officer and our legal advisor. The parties that are present today should ensure that they are contactable by telephone whilst this discussion is being reached in case we have any further questions. Once we've made that decision, we will this will be communicated to you and the decision will in, in writing will be followed within five days. I hope you understand all that. I'm sure most of you will have been given information prior to coming uh, and certainly will have been given papers um, on things that have, that have been submitted. So I'm going to start the agenda now, if that's all right with everyone. Uh, and I'm going to ask if there are any declarations of interest from my colleagues. No, there doesn't appear to be. So we'll go straight 
it to Miss Klein, who is the sub, uh, the officer. We've had the the Miss Klein's um, submission, and so we wonder if there are any questions from members. Councillor Newall, Councillor Fletcher, have you any questions? No, no, right, okay. Um, that in that case, I'm going to um, ask for questions from um, the applicant, please. Have you any questions? No questions. No. no. Okay, thank you, thank you. And now, are there any other questions from the objectors? Anything they would like to ask? No, this is always a little bit of a difficult bit because we've all got to take our our turn. But if you can indicate if there is a time when you want to speak, I will come to you as soon as I can. We're now going to move on to the applicant. Um, and so um, I'm going to ask now uh, if, if the applicant would like to make the application. Hello, thank you. I'm going to hand over to Phil Mason. He's going to represent on our behalf. OK, that's fine. Okay, thank you, Councillor Fairclough. And uh, first of all, can I say thank you to everybody for your time today. Um, understandably, we're living in very unprecedented times. Uh, all of us have gone through difficult times, and I'm sure that um, all of us across Bolton want uh, to help Bolton recover from uh, COVID-19 and, and to live in a, a stronger world as a consequence and commit to Bolton being an active, connected and prosperous town that we want it to be. And Bolton Wanderers are playing its part in that, um, wanting to emphasise that we're one club, we're one community, one town, and trying to bring something that's unique and different to the town, to bring some positivity uh, during these challenging days. Um, and uh, there's no doubt about it that the culture and arts sector has been impacted in so many ways and so many people have lost their jobs and livelihoods and so many activities have been cancelled in the entertainment world, even activities for children and families, etc. And we recognise that for good, positive mental health and well-being, culture and arts plays a significant part as, as well as sport and leisure. Uh, and so the reason for this application is in that context of these unprecedented times. And, and the idea is uh, to, to have this uh, application of the change of license just to run two events. And that's the Live at Drive events, that's the six week event starting on Saturday 25th of July. And, and don't forget that's a mixed events of all sorts of activities, concerts, musicals, children's shows, family shows, comedy. And they're at various time slots um, uh, throughout the throughout the day, uh, which I'll come to in a moment. The other part of the application is for uh, the possibility of having some Christmas markets, and this only requires a license if alcohol is going to be served, and that will be background music only, and that would certainly end at 10 o'clock every night. But at this moment, it's just a concept, and there's no guarantee it will take place. Recognise that uh, the the initial application. Uh, was very much for 250 days a year. That was that was only because really um, we were just trying to get an application in quick. There was never an intention of using it for all those days of the year at all. Um, and and to have that uh, have it amended is is absolutely perfectly fine for us, as we'll come on to in a minute. Um, obviously, in an ideal world, we'd have submitted this application earlier. But events came about, responded to the new, new COVID world, and there was an opportunity to take on board this uh, as a real uh, opportunity for Bolton to, to shine, really, and to put on activities and events for the people of Bolton and beyond and bring some economic benefit to the town as well. So uh, the, there's obviously been clear public demand for uh, this event, and a lot of tickets have been sold already, including uh, those of Bolton residents and, and a lot around the BL6 area of Bolton. Um, but we recognise that, you know, this is all subject, absolutely subject to planning. And certainly the promoter totally understands that in terms of if you don't get the licence, then obviously this can't go ahead. But the, the, the hope is that there will be uh, an empathy for, uh, you know, putting these events together to to make it to, to make it good to make it a good positive event with goodwill 
uh, from everybody concerned. So in terms of the licence itself, um, we recognise and accept that 365 days a year is not, is not what we're looking for. Um, it is literally uh, limited to these two events that I've hi highlighted before. The actual live and drive event itself is only limited to 300 cars. Everybody drives to the event um, and then they get in their little space with social distancing on the car park and they can only stay in that space with the social distancing in place. So even if there's an average of four people per car, that's only 1,200 people at the event uh, each time it takes place and probably the numbers will be less. Um, as I say, each car's got a designated place. The occupant has a space next to the car which they can use. And there can be no mixing between attendees from other vehicles because of social distancing and living in a COVID world. And the only re reason anybody has to attend is, is to use the toilet and that's got to be fully compliant with social distancing as well. Yes, tickets have gone on sale. We understand that and people are rightly concerned and I get that, uh, that hold on a minute, tickets have gone on sale and the, the license hasn't been granted yet, but the promoter understands that um, and it was just around timing issues that that was the case. For the event itself, there are four slots a day, one at 11 o'clock, one at two o'clock, one at 6.30 and one at nine o'clock. And each of the shows are between an hour or an hour and a half. There's no warm up artists for any of the events the literally one hour or one and a half hour slots for each event. And as I say, there's a whole variety of events that are taking place. So we've got uh, a number of comedies, uh, comedy slots, family shows, uh, musical theatre, as well as other kind of headline events. Now I recognise that there is a, a real concern, and I understand that, uh, around uh, the noise and the noise levels. Um, and I'm going to ask if it's possible to, for Jason to come in at this point, who is the commercial director for Live Nation, just to explain what's been going on in the background to uh, make sure that the noise levels and the sound levels have got the right management plan in place. And they've been working with Vanguardia, who are experts in the field in this noise and sound area, if that's possible, Councillor Fairclough. Yes. That's uh, that's fine. Um, you'll you'll have to mute, and he'll have to come on. Or you may, is he in the same room as you? Are you all together? No, no, he's in a different, different place. Right. Well, well, as long as he can get himself on, and you can stand in the background, that's fine. Thank you. Uh, hello, Councillor Fairclough. It's Jason Cotillard here from Live Nation. Can you can you hear me okay? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Technology, excellent. I'm just down the road in Blackpool, so not too far away. Right. Um, yeah, Phil, uh, just going on from, from Phil's comments, I think um, to put these into perspective, uh, Live Nation is the global leader in terms of live entertainment and music promotion. And we felt it was incumbent on us as, as the global leader and, and largest organisation that we try and make an effort to bring back to the, to the communities, to the country, uh, live entertainment. And we selected Bolton, as we brought Rod Stewart to Bolton in, um, in the past, as one of our just 12 national venues from Edinburgh down to London and Bristol, to so just 12 venues. And, and, and we selected Bolton on the basis that, that we know the venue very well and we've worked very well with them um, before. And, and we've certainly had the support from the council um, in terms of delivering Rod Stewart last year under, under some challenging circumstances. This is not a commercial venture. Um, Live Nation are doing this. If we, if we break even, we will be very, very delighted, but the chances of that happening are very unlikely. Um, and on nor normal circumstances, in any normal, uh, normal year without a pandemic, uh, an application uh, or a project like this would, would, would just not have any wings at all. We wouldn't have brought it to the table, but we are in extreme circumstances. So therefore, what we are trying to do is, is to deliver and bring back um, a positive impact on the economy and hopefully on the on the people that are coming to to see these shows. We have gone on sale subject to license, as Phil said, and we've sold circa of 3,000 uh, cars, um, so with various numbers of people in cars thus far. So we've had a, a very supportive dialogue with um, your uh, uh, EHOs and, uh, and, and, and pollution team. Um, and we've had uh, submitted uh, various versions of a noise management plan. Um, we appreciate that 
uh, we are reliant on the goodwill of everyone involved to make this happen because it, it, it is an exceptional ask. Um, and we don't really know how, uh, how it's going to be received. Um, we hope that within the community it's received well, but it is a big ask and it is, you know, we are reliant on people's goodwill um, to have this amount of shows over, over the course of six weeks. Uh, Phil has rightly said that the, the, the shows are going to be all very different and with all genres from children's shows to comedy and to uh, other more traditional live entertainment. Um, and all of the shows uh, are going to be at, at most 90 minutes and most of them are certainly going to be at 60 minutes. We've worked with the um, with your EHO team there to uh, hopefully concede on, on some of the areas that uh, that we that we had been hoping. So each week will will definitely contain one day with no shows at all. Um, our time slots that we we confirmed that we'll keep to. Um, we are looking at uh, uh, sound, background sound, and bass sound, and, and, and agreeing hopefully um, some sensible uh, numbers with that. So, and we will have on-site management for certainly the start and, and the more enhanced shows, which may, uh, may be uh, a higher volume than the children's shows, for example. Um, we will certainly have proactive noise management going on off-site um, for those enhanced shows. So I hope to think that, um, that your, uh, your officers there within the council have, um, have seen that, like them, that we're trying to make this work uh, and it's an exceptional product uh, project in, in exceptional circumstances, but we are we are trying to make it viable enough to, to roll out across the country at 12 venues and, and Bolton being one of those national venues. Thank you. Is that everything that you wish to say, Jason? I yeah, thought Phil really said that you were really going quick. to speak a bit more on the sound equipment. Well, in terms of the, in terms of the sound equipment, um, we are uh, it, it is going to be a, a PA system. But what we are putting in place is what's called relays, and it's very it allows the sound system to be very targeted. So rather than just uh, one sound system on on a stage, one PA system on a stage, we have smaller speakers um, within the car park area. And bearing in mind, it is only three hundred or up to three hundred cars. There may be circumstances where we only get 100 cars in, so the additional speakers that we put in will be able to target very narrowly that sound to hopefully prevent it bleeding out um, out of the arena space. So we're putting in a lot of technology around that in terms of those relays and having those extra relay speakers or, or PA systems in place doesn't mean that there's more sound, it actually means that it's more controllable and hopefully more targeted and less sound actually than, uh, than having just one set of, of PA on the stage, if that makes sense. Okay, thank you. Is, there, is that everything you want to say, Phil? Um, are you? Yes, I think, I think that, that covers uh, the major concerns that people have. I think what I would say is that obviously we are trying to bring some positivity to Bolton. Uh, we are committed to uh, supporting the town and for it to be that active, connected and prosperous town that we all want it to be. Uh, I think uh, just additionally, uh, we have committed too to running resident forum, forums on a quarterly uh, basis uh, when, when uh, required, in all, you know, to talk about any other issues that they might have. So we, we want good positive relationships with, with our neighbours uh, within uh, the Horwich area um, as a football club and indeed across the town. So if there are concerns that people have, we want to make sure that uh, people feel that they've got the freedom to raise those in a sensible way. Thank you. I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm just going to now go to uh, members to um, Councillor Fletcher and Councillor you all, is there any questions that you have of what's been just been presented? No, thank you, Chair. No, thank you, Chair. Right, that's fine. Thank you. Um, could I then ask, uh, as the licensing officer, any questions of the applicant? No. Uh, no Miss King, no. sorry, Miss King, do you have any? Uh, any questions of the applicant? 
No, thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, I'm coming now to the, the, object, the objectors. Now, normally we would have one person speaking on behalf of the objectors. I'm thinking that that might be um, yourself, Mr. Austin, but, but maybe not. Would you like to say whether you have any questions? Can you hear me? I, I, well, I can hear you, yes, no. Yeah, it's Mr. Austin. Yeah, I do have some questions. Um, right, I'll okay, also Mr. Austin. Later on. Sorry? I do have some questions and I'll also be speaking later on in the call. Yes, hopefully. you will be speaking later on, but just at the moment, would you just dealing with, with questions about what, what has been said by yeah, Mr. Mason, um, if that's yeah. all right with you. So if you've if you've any questions you'd like to ask regarding yeah. what they've they've um, applied, that, that would be helpful. Thank you. OK, I've got four questions in relation to what's just been said. Um, right. The first one, Mr Mason said that this is all subject to planning. Now, I've been in contact with the planning department who has told me that planning permission is required for all of this. Planning applications take eight to 13 weeks to determine. So planning permission won't be in place by the time these events come round. Um, so I'm just wondering how this can all be subject to planning. The second question is, can I, uh, so, yeah. sorry, um, may I just let him a answer that question first and then we'll come back for your next question and so on, if that's all right with you? Yeah. So, okay, so so um, Mr Mason, Phil, would you like to say about yeah. the planning well, application? Uh, to be honest, that was a slip of the tongue. What I meant to say there was licensing. Uh, the mm -hmm. reality is that this event doesn't need planning. Uh, the law has been changed with regard to these e events in recent times as well, so there's no need no need for planning over that period. Suzanne, do you want to say something? No. Yeah, yeah. So that that's uh, that, so there's no planning permission. Planning required. isn't required. Okay. No, do you understand that, Mr. Something? Austin? Yes. I do. I'm a chartered town planner, um, and I've got 15 years experience. The legislation which was introduced last week doesn't apply to them. The conditions and limitations of that legislation do not apply to the club and the stadium. Now, the planning department has confirmed this to me, that they would need planning permission and that the legislation doesn't apply. So they're actually incorrect there and they would be in breach of planning law. Right. And this is being communicated just... by the planning department. Yes. Could I just interrupt a little bit there? Um, I have no reason to, to disagree with what you're saying at all. Um, but in, in effect, licensing has nothing to do with planning. So this particular part of the application, we may or may not grant, and that would not mean that they wouldn't still have to get planning if, if what you're saying. Uh, they could actually be given permission uh, for the license, but not get planning, or they could do it the other way around. So they're totally separate. So. I'm not saying that it won't make any difference to what, what you're saying. Um, yeah. The actual license is a separate entity. So is that all right for you? Do you understand that? That's fine. I'm just clarifying a point that they made. Yeah. And then they Absolutely, need to go. that's that's fine. So what, yeah. what's your second point, please, Mr. Aston? Second point is that in the application it referred to 280 cars for the Live Nation. Uh, from what I recall, um, but now it's stating 300 or still stated 300 cars. Right, Mr Mason, would you like to clarify the number of cars? Yes, that, that, that's absolutely correct. Uh, when we uh, looked at the cab drawings, we recognised that uh, what we thought at first was going to uh, be suitable for 280 cars is actually suitable for 300 cars, but clearly that's uh, we're only talking still 1,200 people, uh, probably at the most, uh, in those cars um, once we've got them social distanced and once we've got them spaced out. And as has as been alluded to, there'll be a number of events and activities and concerts that will be lower than that number, but the maximum would be 300. Thank you. And, and your next question, please. Yeah, so it's stated that um, not all of them events are going to be live music. Um, we've looked through the Live Nation roster um, and whilst that's the case, the vast majority are there's four days of musical theatre, one day of comedy and the rest is live music in this 43 day period. So it feels slightly um, misleading or disingenuous to say that it's not all live music when 
probably 90, 95% of it is live music. I just think that needs to be uh, confirmed by the applicant that it is the majority being live music. Thank you. Mr Mason. Yeah, certainly. Uh, not, not all the shows have, uh, have been released as yet. Um, and uh, looking down the, the, the list that I've got in front of me here, we've got eight around musical theatre, two at the moment comedy, nine family shows, and then uh, 11 headline acts, uh, six middle of the road, and another seven live music acts. So there's a whole variety there. That's a total of 43. Um, I, but I don't know if Jason wants to say anything with regard to the mix uh, at all at this stage. Uh, yep. Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. OK, great. Yeah, I mean, uh, just to add to Phil, we're, just, we're currently on pre-sales with uh, Dick and Dom, Dinosaurs, Horrible Histories, Justin, uh, a Rewind Show, which is an 80s music show, and also Tigers Come to Tea. So, yeah, I mean, in terms of genres, in terms of the flavours of the uh, of the different performances, um, it, it is very much a, a mixed bag, uh, for sure, yeah. And your next question, Mr. Austin. Uh, yeah, the final one. Uh, they're saying that it won't be seven days straight of events. It's six out of seven days. Now we've calendared what they're proposing, um, and between the fifth and the sixteenth of July, I think this is. Or no, no, August. There's an event every day, and then so that's eleven days straight. And then between the tenth and sixteenth, that's seven days straight. So I don't believe that that's correct. Yeah, I don't. Sorry, Councillor. Uh, yes, yes, Councillor. That's fine. Again. Uh, yeah, I, I, I um, conceded earlier on with your uh, EHO team um, that we will uh, ensure and commit to a, a six day a week. So every, uh, we will do some changing of the current program, and we will ensure that, uh, subject to the license being granted. That um, that there is uh, a one day a week with, without any uh, any performances, so we'll we'll reschedule some of those shows. Thank you. Right, Mr. Austin, is that all right on the on the questions that you wanted to ask? No further questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, now then, um, do we have um, the supporter? Is there any questions that you would like to ask? Hello. Hello. Hi, this is Tracy Fenton. Tracy Fenton. Um, I, I mean, am I allowed to sort of say why I want it to go ahead now, or is that? No, no. You'll be go? given that opportunity. Uh, you'll be given that opportunity later. This is just to ask questions on the um, information that's been put forward um, by oh, Mr. Mason. Is that no, all right? I'm happy with that. Thank you. Councillor <laughs> Baines, did you have any questions? Thank you, Chair. I have no questions. OK, right. Well, that's 25% um, I think that we've got through. Um, so I'm now going to ask um, the next person, which will be uh, Mrs King. Mrs King, would you like to put forward your representations, please? Um, just checking you can hear me, OK? Yes, yeah. we can. Thank you. Um, just following on from my uh, written submission, um, yes. which you've all had, um, just got a couple of things to add following discussions with um, Live Nation. I right. Think, um, one of the things that uh, Mr. Austin just picked up on there was the um, six or seven, um, the uh, event seven days a week between the fifth uh, and sixteenth of August. Yeah. Um, which it's like it's like um, Mr. Jason's just mentioned. They're going to um, agree to do a, uh, a, a an event free day during the, that time slot. Just yeah. to point out that of those events, there were um, ten of those were the the later slots, and um, a number five of those, I believe, are um, enhanced acts, which will um, attract the. Uh, the higher noise level. Um, so obviously, you know, there is a bit of concern there, the number of acts altogether with the um, 
that are classed as enhanced. Um, so that's just one of the things I've picked up on. Um, in relation to um, the items in my representation, there were a number of things that I said were deficient within the noise management plan. Um, yes. And I put those in, in number order. So just, um, just to update on those, um, in, in relation to the first one about the noise consultant being on site, noise consultants that I feel I've been advised will be on site for the first three days. Um, to look at each individual event, set levels, uh, front of house, and the proposal is that it, it hopefully will be self-regulating once those levels are set. Um, there will be members of the production team who have sound level meters and will be in the field should that be needed if we get if they get complaints. Um, so that's the update on that one. And also, and the noise consultants will come back should there appear to be an issue with the um with noise and the number of complaints being received in relation right. to number two um i've got no update on number two item two um number three uh, the noise management plan suggested that local authorities would be manning a um complaint line and be out monitoring all the time obviously this is um, a responsibility of the venue and the promoter um, so they've since amended that. Uh, however, we do recognise that there is likely to be a need for us to have some presence throughout the duration of the, of the event, which itself will be um, with very resource intensive. And it would be impossible really for us to have somebody there throughout the event due to our, our resources. Um, item number four about base limits. Um, the revised noise management plan just put in place some base limits. I've queried the level of the base limit and um, it has been agreed that, um, that it will be reduced to what's included in the code of practice. Um, so that's just my update. We, we still remain concerned uh, given the duration of the event um, and the levels proposed, which is what we'd expect really if we've got, um, you know, about three or four events at the stadium over a, over a year when we've got so many events. Uh, we are concerned at the resultant noise levels uh, given what's proposed in the noise management plan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Um, Councillor Newell, Councillor Fletcher, is there anything that you would like to ask? No, thank you, Chair. No, thank you, Chair. Very good. Um, right, now I'm about to go back uh, down the list. Um, Mr Mason, is there anything that you would like to, uh, to ask or to comment on that's been put forward by, by Mrs King? No, I think, I think um, uh, you know, a lot of those concerns uh, are being addressed by the noise management plan and the noise management company. I think that re we recognise that we're just living in very unprecedented times and uh, therefore that there is no kind of real template for this. Uh, but I do know that Live Nation and sort of Vanguardia are very willing to work very closely with uh, noise management to make sure that it is uh, comfortable for everybody concerned and that we can have a, a very positive experience for people um, having lived through the difficulties that they have. Thank you. Um, May I come back, uh, Chair? Just, sorry? May I come back? Uh, is King. that, is that, <laughs> I'm sorry, yes, <laughs> yes, Mrs King, yes, of course. Yes, thank you. Um, yes, I've got, uh, I do agree that uh, the promoter and Vanguardia, will, they are trying to work together to, to um, to make this event you know as viable as possible however there are certain levels that need to be achieved front of house uh, for audience experience um, so there is a limit in how much the noise can be reduced on site um, and the noise levels that are proposed which we've tried to some, come to some agreement on um, but the maximum levels that are proposed within the community are still between 65 and 75 dB a residential property, which is significant. Thank you. Thank you. Um, 
No, then the licensing officer, I, I'm confused now. Is it um, Miss Pritchard or Mrs Klein? Mrs. Uh, thanks. Sorry about that, Liz. Um, have you any questions? No, I've no questions. That's fine. Thank you. Fine. That's that's okay. Um, right. Uh, then I move on now to um, the objector, uh, Mr. Austin. Do you have any um, any questions? No, I don't have any questions. Thank you, um, Mrs. The the um, supporter. Is it Tracy? Have you any questions? No, thank you. I'm OK. OK, um, I apologise for all these these breaks. It's difficult when you can't actually see anybody. Um, and uh, Councillor Baines, do you have any questions? No questions. Thank you, Chair. Right, there you go. So we then uh, move on now to the supporters. Um, Supporters, and, and I'm going to ask uh, the, the supporter of this uh, application to come forward and, and to put their, what they need to say. Um, hi. Hello, Hello is that Tracy again? It's a, yes, hi. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Hello, are you all right? If you'd like to... to if you are able to just speak up a little bit, you're a bit low, but, but we can hear okay. you. Well, that's unusual. <laughs> <laughs> right, OK. Um, so I'm really um, fascinated with what everyone said, and um, I totally agree with where um, Phil's coming from. So for me, I'm a holistic educator. I look after people's wellbeing. I've just spent three years in Iraq working with people with mental health and I've just literally last week saved a boy from jumping off the bridge in Bolton. And to say that COVID-19 has had an adverse effect on people's mental health would be the biggest understatement that this world has ever experienced. So for my support, I would absolutely categorically say that we need art and we need music we need, it, we need it for people's hearts, we need it for people's minds. And the fact that there's only going to be 300 cars in a facility that normally holds 40,000 people, I think is a little bit controversial in itself. Um, we, we're a town that is renowned for being welcoming. We are Bolton people. We are Bolton people who love to love people. And we need this in order for our town to grow and we need this for our town to have its heartbeat back and I think that what Live Nation is doing is phenomenal and I totally back what the what Bolton Wanderers wants to do and with what Phil wants to do and you know I've worked closely with the community and I can categorically say that everything that I've ever done within this community for Bolton Wanderers has always been top notch it always has been I would like to say that because mental health is on such a massive high right now, to be able to give people something to focus on as a well-being and something to look forward to and to go to as a family in our own little bubble and to listen to music and have some fun, how can that possibly be objected? I seriously, I, can, I cannot get my head around how we cannot allow Bolton to be brought back to life. You know, uh, we need to help Bolton to recover from COVID. We need to help Bolton recover in the e in the economy. We need to help children to have some fun. We need young people to be able to have some fun and and older people to get together. We're community based. Bolton's a massive, massive community. It's a massive community. You know, and let Bolton be a part of the ripple effect in order to change people's stories. Let this be something positive that we talk about is at the end of COVID 2020, Bolton was on the map of creating a ripple effect for the rest of the country. So yeah, I'm coming to support of this concert going ahead. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, now I'm going to go to the um, licensing officer, Ms Pritchard. Do you have anything, any comments to make on um, 
what Tracy said. No, no comment. Thank you. Um, Mr. Mason, Phil, do you have anything to say? No comments really, but uh, obviously uh, we're very grateful for Tracy's endorsement of the event and she captures it beautifully in the way in which she's expressed it. And, and you know, that's the, that's the reason, the drive, the passion that drives us as a club to uh, enhance our community life and not diminish it in any way. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Austin, Mr. Jason, um, are you, have you anything to say? Any questions on what's been said? I don't have any questions, no. Thank you. Uh, Miss King, do you have anything to say? Questions, thanks. OK, thank you. Right, uh, Councillor Bain, did you have anything that you wanted to ask? No questions, thank you, Chair. No. Right, so now we move on to the objector. Now, I think there are um, a couple of people speaking at this particular time. There is uh, Mr. Austin, Jason, you'll be speaking, uh, and I think Councillor Baines is going to speak as well. Um, so if I start off with um, with you, Jason, if that's all right, if you'd like to, uh, to speak to the committee about your objections, please. Hi, can you hear me okay? Hello. Yes, Hello. yes, we can hear you. We do also, of course, have all the information that you've submitted. Um, but yep. but you know, if there's anything that you wish to add, that would be what good. Yeah, yeah, I've got a speech ready. I just want to check I was unmuted. OK, um, sorry, yeah, no, we can all hear you. Excuse me. Sorry, is somebody trying to speak? Yeah, because I'm a supporter and you've not asked me to speak yet. Yeah, my name's Kay Price. I'm on. I'm a sorry. I, I do apologise. Well, I Thank must have you. missed a page. I thought that um, I thought that Tracy had asked us, it was speaking on behalf of the supporters. No, um, I, don't, I don't know Tracy, so I, I'd like to speak. Right, OK, OK, right. Well, um, right. Normally, under normal circumstances, we do only have one person speaking on behalf of uh, objectors and supporters. But um, clearly, if you've been told you can speak, that's fine. As I say, this is rather a new concept for us. Yeah. So apologies, Mr. Austin, if you'll mind, not mind hanging on. A little while longer while we listen to um the, the the supporter and then we'll move on to you is that all right yeah no worries okay thank you thank you so i'm sorry um if you would like to know um thank give you, your um, your support thank you <laughs> thank you um, yeah, so i wanted to um offer my support in for today's application um for a couple of reasons um one is i am a local businesswoman um and i um i'm currently running um, a business club helping local bolton businesses um bounce back after the pandemic um and support people and the community in getting bolton back stronger um so obviously the benefits of running these events from a you know a community spirit from the economy from helping the club and hotel and get through this difficult period, uh, I can only see the positives that that can bring, as well as all the jobs for um, the people involved with the Live Nation events, so the roadies, the sound, the lighting people. Um, we saw on the, the news last night that the funding that's coming from the government now towards the arts and entertainment is realised and late really that um, there's not been a lot of support in that area and it's obviously very, very good for people's well-being mentally. Um, I also want to offer my support as a resident of the Meadows, which is the um, housing estate opposite the event. Um, so I've lived on this estate for 15 years. Um, I have three young children um, and we live on this estate knowing that the um, Baltimore Wanderers Football Club is there. So we have a lot of traffic issues normally on match day. But when you live here, you learn to avoid the traffic going in one way and coming out the other. You just learn to do that when you live on an estate that's next to a stadium. Um, from a traffic point of view, from the people that are objecting, 280, 300 cars really isn't going to make any difference. And from what I've read, those cars are going to be held in car park A, which is off the dual carriageway, and brought into the venue um, down the side of the um, car park. So. The road that runs parallel to our estate shouldn't have a traffic issue. 
to be honest, outside of COVID-19, we have a traffic issue just from the retail stadium and the office blocks that we live next to anyway. That has no impact from the hotel or Bolton Wonders Football Club at all. Um, so on a normal day, with 280 to 300 cars coming in and out, I can't really see that being a reason to object. Um, I know there's been some concerns about people parking on our estate, blocking... Um, you know, you drive and, and what have you and that kind of thing. And obviously that isn't a reason for objections because people will be in their cars going to the event and the cars will be with them. So there'll be no additional overflow parking concerns or issues that anybody who lives on here needs to have any concerns about. I know in the past we've had that on larger events, um, but I know that marshalling can, can, has now been promised for future events, but we can't base this application on what might happen in the future or what's happened in the past because these are completely different types of events to what we've seen um, at the venue before. Um, from a sound point of view, I live on here and I can hear the crowd cheering when Bolton score a goal more than when Elton John or Rod Stewart played from my back garden. So I don't really see the noise pollution personally from being uh, from living on here a long time, um, a massive concern. You can barely hear what they're singing when you're sat in your back garden, particularly from where I live. And I live fairly close to the entrance. Um, so I don't feel that the noise pollution is a big enough reason to not allow uh, these venues, th these events to go ahead and, and the positivity that they will bring and the community spirit that it will bring. Um, and then from, um, I think another concern was litter. And I know that Suzanne has confirmed that she will ensure that litter is managed and, and I'm sure that she'll be speaking with Emerson who managed the estate and the retail park. I mean, what we need to remember is there are restaurants on this retail park that people go to normally till 11, 12 o'clock at night anyway. And um, there's a cinema that's normally packed out, you know, when there's a film on. So we're used to having people around and traffic and, and it being fairly busy. Um, and I think, you know, I've got kids. I want to take my children to some of these events. Um, because we can't do anything or go anywhere at the moment. And being locked down for three months, I really welcome these events and hope that you agree the licence for them. Thank you, Miss Price. Um, Miss Price, I, I just want to say, I'm going to ask people, obviously, again, if there are any questions they wish to ask you. Um, but, but obviously, as you have now spoken as a supporter, we did have another person on the list for objector, which was Jamie Walker. So I just want to reassure Mr Walker that I will ask him if he wishes to say anything so that uh, everyone has been included. Uh, again, apologies that this seems to get a bit messy. But I think that's the, the nature of the way in which we're uh, conducting these meetings at the moment. So I'm now going to go to the licensing officer. Uh, Ms Pritchard, is there anything that you would like to ask uh, of, the, of what's been said by Ms Price? No, I have no questions. Thank you, Chair. Um, and um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mason, did you have any any questions? Anything? You, well, clearly you just agree, I suppose. Indeed, yes. Thank you. Right. Um, Mrs. King, Miss King, did you have any any observations? Just that these um, events are in the open as opposed to within the stadium, so the stadium will have had effect at reducing noise levels um, in the, the estate near to the um, near to the stadium. So we don't Thank know you. what it's like in this open air car park. Right. Um, OK, thank you for that. Um, so, Mr Austin, um, did you have anything uh, to ask about the uh, submission put through by uh, Ms Price? Uh, yeah, I just had an observation regarding the sound issues that have been mentioned. Um, right. Where where it said that sh they can barely hear it from their house. I mean, I think it needs to be acknowledged that different houses on the estate have different relationship with the stadium in terms of some houses will have other properties between. The, the properties may be orientated differently, but in our case, we're right next to Mansell Way. Um, so we can hear it very clearly from our house when there's a concert on. Um, so I just think it needs to be acknowledge that the experience is not the same for every property across the state. And it will be more pronounced at some other properties. Right, I understand. Thank you for that. 
Um, right, no then, I think, um, Councillor Baines, did you have anything to say? No questions, thank you, Chair. No. Right, no, we actually do get down to you, uh, Mr Austin. I'm sorry it's been a long time waiting, but this is your moment. If you'd like to uh, present your case. Yeah, so uh, thank you for your time today and, and give us the opportunity to speak. Uh, yeah, my name is Julian Austin and I'm a resident on Lowbrook Close and uh, I object to the proposed licensing application. We have lived in this house since it was built in 2007 and uh, really fully invested in this location. We do fully support the need for businesses to explore other ways of generating income during the pandemic, but we do not believe that this should be at the expense of residential amenity. It is also noted that any such arguments in terms of economic reasons that may be put forward are not relevant to the four licensing objectives here and therefore should not be given any weight. In our view, there are a multitude of other events, such as a silent disco or drive-in cinema perhaps, which could be explore, explored, and these would allow the stadium to generate some income whilst being much more neighbour friendly. In living next to a stadium, naturally you do expect some disruption on match days and from the odd live events, which in the past has been typically one or two days events in the stadium a year. However, you don't expect the car parks around the stadium to then be turned into something which is akin to a music festival venue for 43 days. The majority of the events in the Live Nation roster are live music, so then potentially have live music every day until late into the night over such a long period will cause severe disturbance to homes on the Meadows estate. Residents' sleep and enjoyment of their home will be disturbed, especially at a time when we're having to spend more time at home. Due to the topography of the Meadows Estate, the houses are actually situated at a higher level than the retail park. So what happens is that noise travels to the houses uninterrupted. It's not buffered by the retail properties. The stadium's design contains the noise from events to some degree. However, this is not the case with an open air event and the impact could be worse. Evidence from past events also suggests that we will be clearly affected. The noise from concerts in the stadium is audible from within our house. And we experienced similar issues when an outdoor music event was held at the USM Bolton Arena last year. There is no evidence to suggest that we won't be affected. And actually, even the letters of support confirm this. I refer to representation number 14 in support, which states, I personally enjoy listening to the events from my garden. Now, while this may be enjoyable to them, I'm sure it would not be enjoyable for those with young children trying to get them to sleep, or those people working long shifts at home, especially when it's over a 43 day period. In our view, the finishing time is far too late, and this coupled with the duration of the events for 43 days would cause a severe disturbance. This would harm our mental health and our mental well-being, and this needs to be considered. In terms of mitigation, the applicants put forward that noise monitoring will be undertaken. Uh, firstly, we point out that monitoring is not really mitigation, and without any sensible methodology being agreed, um, and proposed actions that could arise from this monitoring, I don't believe it's sufficient that I would defer to the Environmental Protection Officer on this point. Uh, we do also know the Commons and Environmental Te Protection Team, which seem to find it hard to support the methodology or the application in general, and they, they find it very difficult to see how conditions could be attached to make it acceptable. The finishing time at 10.30pm would also result in an increase in vehicle movements at unsociable hours and people travelling through the estate. We experienced disruption on midweek matches, but again, this is limited to what, seven or eight matches over the season, and certainly not most nights for a 43 day period. Our concerns regarding traffic and the potential for disruption and antisocial behaviour also apply to the Winter Wonderland event, which under the terms of proposed licence could attract 10,000 people to the area each day. The traffic impacts and public nuisance from these 10,000 additional people would be significant. Um, I'd also like to refer to the letter received from the applicant on the 3rd of July, uh, where she referred to the new plenary legislation and believes that it's not, this will allow the events to go ahead. Uh, as expressed earlier, I'm a Chartered Town Planner and I've had this confirmed by the planning department that this legislation does not apply to them and they need a planning permission. So if they need planning permission, it's going to take a period of time which would not which would mean that the planning permission is not in place before the events take place. So they would be knowingly breaking planning law as events go ahead. The applicant's letter 
also tend to paint a picture that the majority of residents support these events. The truth is that far more people objected to this application than supported it, and representations were received from two of the three war councillors whose job it is to provide a voice for the people. The majority of the letters in support were also from persons who live further away from the stadium. So to recap and conclude then, there are a multitude of other events such as the silent disco or driving cinema which could be explored and these would generate income and be much more neighbour friendly. The proposed live music events due to their late finish and duration of 43 days straight will cause severe disturbance to local residents and affect their mental health and well-being. We therefore urge the panel to follow the advice of the environmental protection team and refuse this application. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry, Julian, I called you Jason. I'm just not doing it right, am I? But thank you I for that. Uh, I, oh, well, yes, so do I. <laughs> More so than you, probably. Um, I'll just ask the uh, the licensing officer, Ms. Pritchard, have you got anything that you need, you would like to uh, to ask about what Jason said? No. Uh, Mr. Mason, do you have anything that you would like Maybe, to ask? Yeah. Uh, Thank you, Councillor Fairchild. Just to maybe clarify a few things. Uh, obviously, we're, we're now down to six days a week, not the seven days a week. So I think we're talking 36 days, not the 43 uh, that was outlined. Um, obviously, the curfew uh, was reduced to 10.30 and uh, on some occasions that will be 10 o'clock. Uh, so it's not going to drag on the up beyond that time. I recognise that there is, of course, there is noise and of course there is impact and I appreciate that. Uh, but try to work on mitigation for that in any kind of way uh, and, and try to come to a methodology that works is, is important. Uh, we're talking 300 cars, no more than that, and they can, they can exit uh, from uh, the area from Middlebrook right out um, on, onto the roundabout without having to impact upon um, uh, any other uh, estates around the, uh, the site really um, and, and that's a maximum of 300 cars it won't be 300 cars uh, all of the time a lot of the events that we're talking about are family events anyway so uh, it, with regard to you know kind of uh, antisocial behavior I, I don't see that the case because people have got to stay in the cars or in the, the area of their cars and be social distance and follow those uh, guidelines and observations uh, that are, are absolutely important um, and of course um, in, in terms of 10,000 people each day I think it's probably over a week period because we're talking 1,200 people a car uh, uh, in each event in each activity and that's at the most because you're only getting four I don't think you can get more than four people in a car at a time or um, so um, I think that yeah. I think that uh, and then and then finally um, with regard to the BL6 area, there's a, there's a lot of people who have already bought tickets and supporting the event. I appreciate they're not all from one estate, but they're certainly from the area. Can I just say a few things in response to that, please? Yes, yes, there's questions that have yeah. been asked to you. So, I mean, 36 out of 43 days finishing at 10.30, in our view, is still uh, a prolonged period and it would be intensive and uh, intensive disturbance that would be caused. Um, there's been some discussion about the methodology of the uh, noise management plan. Now we haven't been party to these details but it sounds like this methodology is not agreed with the environmental protection team and they have significant concerns so it sounds like they're, they're still objecting to this. Um, in terms of a lot of events being family events as, as stated earlier there's well over half of these are live music events. Uh, I haven't got the roster in front of me to go through it, but predominantly this is live music that we're dealing with. It'll be live music on most days. Um, the comments regarding traffic and antisocial and the 10,000 figure, uh, we need to forget we're not just dealing with the live nation here, it's a winter wonderland is included on the license. So that would allow 10,000 people to the area every day for the Winter Wonderland event. There will be traffic impacts because of that, uh, which could be substantial. Um, so yeah, that, those are my comments really in response. Thank you. Ms King, do you have any, yeah, any, any questions? 
No, not really. I would just like to say that the idea of the noise monitoring would be to monitor compliance with the levels stated in the noise management plan, which are actually um, based on levels which you don't, like I said previously, for a limited number of events, not as many events as, as this event, this whole event package um, proposes to have. Um, and Obviously, there's no intention that at those levels it won't be audible in residential properties. Um, so we could get be in a position where we've got complaints and then meet the um, levels uh, specified in the noise management plan. And the overriding thing is that we need that the event organizer will need to maintain a customer experience at some point. Just repeating really what I said before. Sorry. Okay. Um, Councillor Baines, did you have anything to say? Um, and I've no questions, but can I actually uh, just uh, say something about my objection? That's no, okay. no, you'll you'll be getting your turn. You're you're in the queue. <laughs> All right, thank you. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> no, no, we're we're only we're only dealing with uh, with Mr. Okay, Astin at that's the moment. Fine. Um, that's fine. So I'm just going to ask um, whether the, the, any of the two supporters have anything to ask questions on. Um, you know, it, it isn't an opportunity to come back with your views. It's just to ask questions on anything that Mr. Austin has said. Um, yes, please. I'd like to ask Mr. Austin a question, if that's OK. It is, if you just tell me who it is. Oh, sorry, it's Tracy Benson. <laughs> OK, thank you, Tracy. I'm it's just that I, I'm looking at a blank screen. Right, Tracy, <laughs> so OK, sorry. if you've got a question for Mr. Austin, that's fine. Thank you. What I would like to know is obviously his concern is about where he lives, which I totally understand. However, knowing where he lives, surely every match day, has, what I'm trying to get across is, so has he put a protest in with the matches that go on there with the 40,000 people that, you know, it can sometimes um, equate to when a match day is on? And also the other concerts, every time there's been a concert at the, what, at the stadium, has he put a complaint in? Because it just makes me wonder if it's such a a bad place to live because of that, then surely there should be, a, you know, maybe you've lived there since 2007, so it can't be that bad. That's my yeah, opinion. I can respond to that. <laughs> I mean, I think a lot of that came across in my speech, hopefully, but there's a, a big difference to a match day event. Yes, when the match is on, you hear the murmur of the crowd. And that's in the stadium, but that's very different to having a consecutive period of live music where it's much more audible. Um, and have I objected to concerts in the past? No, I haven't, because it's only been one or two events a year. This is a step change, going from one or two events a year. Yes, you, you, you naturally expect there's going to be an event a year. We, you just put up with it because you know there's not going to be 35 more after it. So that, that's my argument there, really. It's the, it's the duration and intensity of the event. Yeah, of course, living next to the stadium, you know what you're getting into, and you know that you have to put up the odd event and, and you know, noise from supporters. But this is a step change in a different direction, and the intensity and duration is much more severe. Okay. Could I ask a question, please? Uh, would that be Miss Price? It is Mrs. Price. It is. Thank Mrs. You. Price. Sorry. Yes. Yes. Thank you. It's just as I say, I can't see you at all, <laughs> and I've not got um, voices just yet. No, not used to our voices or anything. And um, the, the only thing I'd like to ask is, it, it, because of obviously the situation that we're currently in, this is obviously a, a one-off um, way of working and way of creating entertainment for the local community. I understand where you live on our estate will make a difference to the noise volumes and that kind of thing. But I'm just wondering why there is such so much objection to it when it's just going to happen this summer because it can only happen this way. If it could happen in the stadium, I think it would be happening in the stadium. And I wonder whether the objections would be there if it was happening in the stadium. You know, it, it, I have three young children. My children are in bed before nine o'clock at night, and these events aren't due to start until then anyway, from what I understand, especially the live music events. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I'm just, I'm just wondering. Um, you know, I know there's been quite a lot of talk. We have a WhatsApp group on our residents' estate, 
um, where there has been a lot of talk about this license and a lot of discussion about objections to it, but then there's also been support for it on the same group. Um, so I'm not sure it's a, a representation either way on this meeting today because of the 80 people on the WhatsApp group, the majority of the people didn't comment either way. So there is a small group of people who object and a small group of people who are in support and it doesn't give you a majority view, I don't think, of the people that live on here. And that's my opinion. Thank you for that. Although that yeah. was a, a bit of a liberty, really, because in fairness, you're only supposed to be uh, asking questions about mes what Mr. Austin said and not really giving us your opinion on a fair opinion. However, you've done it, you've said it. So did you want to come back, Mr. Austin? Yeah, I would. Firstly, I think I'll just say that um, I don't think we can really know what's on a WhatsApp group and, and how relevant that is to this. Um, I didn't really get the question that clearly, but it, it seemed to be suggesting that would we'd be bothered if the events were in the stadium. Well, the stadium would only be allowed one to three events a year. So, um, as I said in the previous question, we we kind of put up with the, the odd event a year. This is different. This is a step change. Um, and whether I, I think she was saying, would I have objected? Um, if the pandemic wasn't happening or, or something like that. I didn't really get that, but I think at my point in the speech was that, you know, we're, we are supportive of the need for businesses to explore other ways of making an income. Um, and there's other events they could do here which would generate an income and be much more neighbour friendly. Now, in 20 seconds, I thought of silent disco driving cinema where you tune into it on the radio in the car. Now that would be much more neighbour friendly. I think there's a need to potentially explore these these options as an alternative. Uh, so I think hopefully that covers the questions or comments that were raised. Okay, thank you. Um, no, I have to be honest. I've 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 lost who I've asked if they want to ask you questions. Yes, I know I've done Councillor Baines. Uh, and we've done the two objectors, so I think that would only leave uh, the poor man I've left out right from the beginning, which is Mr. Walker. Um, and as he's a supporter, uh, an objector as well, he do, did you have a question at all, Mr. Walker? No, right. I, I would just like to ask you, you one question, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Austin, please. Um, obviously, there has been some movement um, with um, th these events, they have made some concessions. Um, would there be anything else that you could see that would make a difference uh, where you felt it would be acceptable? Is there anything else you felt that they could have done that 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 maybe they haven't done? Apart from look at doing films and, and the other things. Um, the only thing I would say to make it acceptable would, would be an earlier finishing time um, and limiting the amount of events during the week. I think our view is that uh, it should be maybe Friday, Saturday and finishing at 8 p.m. And that way the events are not every night. They don't disturb people's sleep um, and it'd be much more acceptable in that respect. And that, that you know, still gives me the opportunity to, to bring in some income. Right, thank you very much for that. Right, um, we're now going to move on to the um, the second, uh, Councillor Baines, who, who is, I'm going to ask to uh, to speak, and then I'll come to Mr Walker. Thank you, Chair. Um, can you hear me all right there? I can. Yes, Thank you. we can. Um, I have objected to this application and I'm also representing the views of several residents who live near to the University of Bolton Stadium, who have contacted me individually and who I've been in contact with until yesterday. However, can I make it clear from the start that they and I are not objecting to events taking place there as we appreciate coming out of COVID-19 requires the clubs to income generate and I feel no one would object morally to them doing this. When considering the four licensing objection, uh, objectives, should I say, given uh, by the Licensing Act of 2003, the objection is based on the prevention of public nuisance and the prevention of uh, crime and disorder, i.e. noise pollution, um, indiscriminate parking and uh, ineffective marshalling. 
The initial application, as we know, requested permission for an unlimited number of events with varying nature with the application of sound permitted for the seven days a week between 11 and 11.30. The venue, as we know, is within 400 metres of residential property. In fairness to uh, and to mitigate the football club, which has always valued a good relationship with neighbours, and I'm sure this will continue under the new management, has listened and has, we feel, amended the proposed curfew time to now 22.30 hours and the days have been looked at as well, which we now feel is acceptable. The first drive-in performance is for a maximum of 300 vehicles, so approximately, as been said, about 1,200 people. And realistically, this should not cause any site accommodation problems, as numbers uh, are much smaller than many other previous uh, events that have happened there. I've got to say that I feel as Executive Cabinet Member on the Council for Health and Wellbeing, events such as these are beneficial especially in the current climate that we're in, to try and give people much needed entertainment. And that's been previously said. It's also useful for the town to raise its profile and to income generate, which is much needed. I therefore feel, and certainly the residents do, I've spoken to up to yesterday, that if the application, applicant can ensure that all the criteria are managed effectively, um, as well as the recommendations made in the pollution control report, then this would indeed be acceptable. Um, obviously subject to ongoing surveillance. But that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right, now I know I know do the, the long trek of people who may wish to ask questions. Um, Ms Pritchard, would you like to say anything? No, oh, thank you, Chair. Ms King, Mrs King? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Miss, Mr. Austin. I think I've gone out to sync there. It should be Mr. Mitchell. Yeah. Mason, Mr. Yeah. Mason first. Sorry. That's, that's all right, Councillor Fairclough. I just want to thank uh, Councillor Danes for the consideration of that and all the residents that uh, she represents, mm. uh, the number of residents that, uh, you know, that had discussions with. And I can categorically assure her and and indeed all the residents that we would continue that uh, positive dialogue with our neighbours uh, because we very much uh, and I, I speak you know on behalf of the the new owners and the board too we're very much in partnership with the community and the town and that's what the new club is beginning to look like. Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Austin. Yeah, the, the only observation I would make is that um, the she says that the residents she's spoken to, I mean, speaking to my, our immediate neighbours, the, the changes that have been made don't overcome our concerns and we would be severely impacted. Uh, so that's all I've got to say. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the, two, the, the two supporters, uh, Miss Price, Mrs Price, get your name wrong. Oh, thank you. Tracy? No, thank you. Oh, good. We're on, we're on a roll here now. I don't think I've left anybody out. Um, but we now come finally to Mr Walker. Uh, and I apologise for leaving you not only to last, but almost leaving you out altogether. But is there anything that you would like to say in your um, objection to the application? It's actually Mr. Austin. I've just had a text from um, Jamie Walker. She says she's been uh, muted out of the group. Oh dear. Uh, right. Well, we'll see what we can do about that. Um, can anybody help me with that one? I think she needs to press star six and it will unmute her. Has she pressed star six to get back in? Uh, We'll just try and uh, get text press her to ask her to do that. Yeah, yeah. and she waits a second and then it'll say she's unmuted. 
Well, while we're waiting, have I done another disservice and called her a mister? Yeah, it's, it's Jamie Walker. Yes, it's, it's miss. It's oh, I'm sorry. Well, at least I'm insulting everybody. Um, she's had to leave the call because it, it, it wasn't working, so she, she left the call, I think. Right. Okay, okay. well, yes. Um, if, if, if you feel that she's not going to be able to come on. Yeah, she's just texting and she won't be able to come on. Okay. Um, her views do align with ours pretty much. Right. Right. And and um, she will have made a written submission, won't she, which we've got so yeah, amongst our did, papers. Yeah. Yes. OK, well, that's uh, that's fine. Well, that more or less brings us um, to the end of things, apart from the summing up. So um, we're now going to go um, back almost the way we, we came. Um, so these are closing statements, they're just an opportunity for you perhaps to say something that you you perhaps felt that you, you wanted to say and had forgotten or something that's come up in, in, during the, the meeting. So um, is there anything um, that, I'm trying to look who I go back with now on this list, um, it starts off, just call you a supporter, which isn't, isn't terribly good. So um, would that be... Miss Miss uh, Miss King and Mrs Price, is there anything that you would you would like to say in summing up? It's just a few words, if you want to, or not at all. Uh, I'd just like it's Catherine King. Um, I'd just like to say that despite the uh, additional information that's been provided, um, we're un unable to agree the noise levels um, off site that would be acceptable to um, to the promoter. Um, so obviously, given the duration of the event, um, our objection will still have to remain on the basis that it's likely to cause public nuisance. OK, thank you for that. Um, Tracy or uh, Mrs Price, did you have anything to say? I would still like to say that it's still going to be a positive effect for Bolton and I appreciate that you know, some noise levels may be a little bit high, but I'm absolutely positive that Live Nations are more than professional. And, you know, they've got a fantastic record of success since they've been um, doing this, um, this work. So I'm sure that they're going to absolutely make sure that everything is in, is in, um, in accordance with what they should be doing. And I just think it's going to be an amazing event. It's going to bring volunteers in. It's going to lift people. We can get volunteers from the University of Bolton, you know, from the Lads and Girls Club, from the from the local um, volunteer sectors. This can be an um, absolutely amazing opportunity to allow Bolton to shine and rise in so much positivity, fun, love and hope. And that's what I want for my town. That's what I want for my town. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Austin, is there anything that you would like to uh, to sum up with? Yeah, just just quickly, I'd just like to say that I think the the, the application, which is thirty-six days in a forty-three day period, it really would be an unprecedented move here. Um, and I think we really need to to listen to the recommendations of the environmental protection team, who recognise the disturbance that the events would cause, and it seems to be contrary to the recommended objectives and guidelines that they have for, for noise control. Um, and it's the late finishing time coupled with the duration of the event which would cause severe disturbance to us. Um, on that basis we're urging the panel to follow the advice of the professionals in the environmental protection team and refuse the application. Thank you, thank you for that. Um, and now we come to um, Mr Mason on behalf of uh, the app Yes, thank you, Councillor Fairclough. And uh, I think that uh, we, we, we've kind of summarised most of it um, as we've gone along. Uh, we recognise uh, some of the concerns that are raised, but we have made that commitment to work with our neighbours and we'll do that. I'm just going to hand over uh, for a final word uh, from Sharon Britton, who is the uh, chairman of the club and owner of the club. Thank Good you. Afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. I just, I just like to say a few brief words because I think Phil um, has summarised everything really well. Um, but our 
core values are doing things properly, respectfully, and um, I totally understand uh, people who live in the area who have objections, um, and we will do everything we can to mitigate, you know, to really try and allay their concerns and work with them. If we do get permission to go ahead, we will absolutely communicate with the local residents at any time. We will be available. We will talk this through. You know, if it really, you know, I work very, very closely um, on mental health. And I do appreciate um, what the gentleman um, is, is saying, and I very much take that on board. But on the other side of that, I see a, a huge value in the positivity um, that if we are able to go ahead with these events in these times where what I'm seeing also um, with mental health, with, with, with the quadrupling of suicides through COVID-19, it's so awful. I truly believe that the positivity that we can bring here will, will, is a real boost that's needed, not, not only to Bolton, but to, to, to the UK, to everybody. But I am very aware that it's, there, there is a negative impact for local residents. And I'm, I'm, we will work with you and we will do everything that we can do within our capabilities to make this hopefully not as painful as you think that it might be. Um, we're here, we have a superb team here. You know, they're, they're, there's really, really good people. We do care. Um, I, I certainly don't want to think that somebody's up every night and we're causing them anxiety. Um, so we're, we'll be very aware of the noise levels. Um, it is unprecedented because we're in unprecedented times, but I want, we are coming together, we're working together, um, and I'd like to feel that if we do get permission, that when we look back, that people within the community, including the local residents, will, will actually think that it, it was good for so very many reasons. It will never be perfect, this type of event will never be perfect, but we're really hoping um, that, that there will be a lot of good that comes out of this. And I also do hear that we should, and we are looking at other events which do not have these noise problems. We're looking at everything. We're looking at everything, not just to generate revenue, but we're looking at everything to bring the community together in, in what is very, very, very trying times for so many people. So this is not just about generating revenue for Bolton Wanderers. This is about a lot more than that. And I'm happy to answer any questions from anyone. Thank you for that. Um, and we're coming to the end. Miss uh, Pritchard, is there anything that you would want to say in summing up? I'll okay, share really just to say that you've heard today from the applicants, supporters of the application and reps made against it, including from the Pollution Control Unit of the Council, who's a responsible authority. And it's now for you to decide in promoting promoting the licensing objective, whether to modify the conditions of the license or reject the whole or part of the application. Thank you. Thank you. Right, so I'd like to thank everybody for um, for being on this uh, on this meeting. Um, it does conclude the meeting meeting as far as, as you are concerned. The subcommittee is going to retire uh, very shortly. Um, again, if you could please be available on telephone in case we need to ask any questions. Um, and once we've made our decision, uh, this will be communicated to you in writing within five days. Again, I would really like to thank you all um, so much for, for, for everything that you've so, been so understanding for a start because nothing ever goes smoothly with these sort of, of meetings. I hope you all feel that you've had a fair uh, opportunity to put uh, your your objections or your um, your support forward um, and I look forward to sending you the um, the result. So I'm going to ask those apart from the subcommittee, which is councillors Fletcher and if I could just remember your name, you all, um, and uh, the Democratic Services Officer and our Legal Services Officer, uh, and the rest of you will leave. And thank you so much for attending this afternoon. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome.